What's going on Serpa Squad? Tanner here and I'm coming at you with a random video packed with a bunch of stuff I wanted to share. First up we'll take a look at the new Aquascape ecosystem pond that we installed last week. Most of you know me well enough to realize that this pond was missing something very important and expressed it down in the comments. That being, plants. Regardless of the type of project I'm working on, I typically go very heavy on the plants. It's not everyone's cup of tea, but that's how I like to design my projects and this one will be no exception. We'll start out by adding some marginals within the pond. To get the job done, my man Weston of Tussie Landscaping came back out to Pittsburgh with a whole slew of plants. When he first showed up, he said, I don't know if you're going to want to use them all, but I feel like deep down he knew the answer that was soon to follow. We're using them all. I also picked up a few to local garden center, so there's a decent amount to start with. We placed various plants in strategic locations on the shelf of the pond to make sure we liked where everything was situated. From there, we took a step back to get a better perspective of what was done. Everything looked good, so we proceeded to plant. To do so, the plants were removed from their planters and buried in the gravel. Not that planting should ever be difficult, but I found this process to be very enjoyable and easy because of how the pond's shelf is designed. That said, I do have to go back and add some more gravel to better secure the plants when I have a moment. The majority of these are perennials, so they'll just get better and better with time. A few highlights from the current selection include a water lily, pickerel, corkscrew rush, and a pitcher plant. There's also a mosaic plant which is really neat, but it's not a perennial. I'll have to bring it inside for a new paludarium build once summer is over. A huge thanks to Weston for helping me out for this part of the project. Fast forward to the next day. The pond is looking good, but it needs fine tuned. The first order of business was to remove this hosta, which was split from one that we have on the side of the house. I also had a lot of sandstone left over from the build. I figured the best use of it was for additional hardscape on the exterior of the pond. Sure it all looks good now and we'll soften it with plants, but there's no reason that we shouldn't add more stones. I definitely think the additions help tie everything together and I may consider buying a few more to add throughout. I also had some extra bags of river rocks that I used to better transition into the mulch landscape and to enhance the overall look. Once it looked proper, I sprayed everything off to remove debris. Now we can move on to the terrestrial plants. My vision is for everything to be very heavily planted, and truthfully you should expect nothing less from me. I personally love the texture created by a dense patch of plants, and in my opinion it looks much more natural and less man-made when done as such. Also, I won't really go over many of the plants names during this process. To start, I added a few Humilio statues near the front of the waterfall. I really like how these look and I think they are the perfect addition for the edge of the waterfall. I couldn't stop here though. My wife and I picked up a handful of nice plants the next day. When planting, I tried to set things up in a way that was visually pleasing from both the front and back of the pond. After all, we'll primarily see it from the back, so better look good from both sides. I also tried to incorporate a lot of plants that will drape over the rocks and soften the edges. Just like you see in my other setups, softening the hardscape is one of the easiest ways to make things look more natural. I also got this faux stump cover from Aquascape. They sent this to me as a means to conceal and protect the cords. Initially it was going to go by the auto doser as this is where the cords were. I didn't like it in this location so I moved everything to the left side of the pond. However I need to get an extension for one of the cords because they don't reach to where I want the stump. I think it looks pretty realistic and it also doubles as a seat with a good view. You probably also noticed that the water is finally cleared up. That's obviously because everything had some time to run, but also because of the polyfill that I added into the filter basket. 
As you can see, it's full of dirt and debris that would otherwise be elsewhere in the system. So in removing the polyfill, we remove a lot of the dirt. Aquascape also sent me some fine filter pads, so I added one of these into the basket after doing a quick clean. They also sent me some water clarifier. I put a few squirts of this into the pond to help bind dirt and other particles so they will be easier to pull out of the system. I was glad they sent this to me because I think water clarifier is a great tool if used in the right circumstances. And here's how it looks now. It's like night and day if you ask me. Although we need way more plants, I think it's really starting to come together. Let's switch gears real quick and go back to the DIY pond. As you can see, everything is still doing extremely well. To this point I've had no issues keeping it nice and clean. I don't dose it with chemicals or anything of the sort. It's staying clean simply because of the way I have it set up. Not to mention that the plants are growing well and the fish are really enjoying it. I even train them to know that when I knock on the wood it's feeding time. Needless to say, I'm still really enjoying this one, and I'm very content to have finally moved the goldfish outside. The whole reason that I came back here though was to rehome this pitcher plant that I got from Rachel O'Leary. We traded plants several months back, and she hooked me up with a lot of the ones you see in this pond. Anyways, this will be better suited for the pond out front, and it'll go nicely with the one I showed earlier. I also harvested a few patches of moss that I've been propagating in the garden to add to the waterfall. I think that's enough of an update on the ponds though. I know many of you are wondering, but I'm not going to get this thing stocked until I add some more plants. I just want the fish to have as much coverage as possible, but that shouldn't be too far into the future. Oh yeah, we also have a little frog that took up residence. Unfortunately, I couldn't get him on film, but he was just a cute little green frog. I believe that I remember hearing something like, build it and they will come, well that's exactly what happened and hopefully we'll see more of him in the future. The last thing that I want to show is some progress that I made on the 180 gallon vivarium. I'm just about ready to finish this one up and get it stocked. As I looked at this more and more, I realized that what this setup was lacking is more plants in the canopy. Specifically, more bromeliads. So that's exactly what I did. I went and got some more. I tried to get ones that were primarily green since most of the ones I have now are red. These of course were planted in various locations to help fill in the space and I think they were the perfect addition. Here's a little before and after to give you some more perspective. Even though it's really coming together, I do think it needs a few more bromeliads and some more terrestrial plants, but believe me when I say that I'm almost done with this one. I also noticed that a few patches of dusk moss finally started to emerge from the background. I was really excited to see this because I wasn't sure if it took. And that's gonna do it for this one. Just a quick random video on the ponds and the 180 gallon vivarium. I hope you all enjoyed seeing the progress of these builds. If you're new here and want to see the future of these builds, as well as similar projects in the future, then be sure to subscribe and join the Serpa Squad today. On that, I'll see you all in the next one. Take care and peace.